السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له من يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان لكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل واحسن هدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر امور محدوثاتها وكل من في الاسلام بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار All praise due to Allah Azza wa Jal. We praise Him and we extol Him. We send a final salutation of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Verily, the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah, the Quran Majid, and the finest guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil of affairs are the newly invented ones, bid'ah. And every bid'ah is going astray, and every going astray leads to the hellfire. That's Allah al-Afiyah with her back. الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله والله اكبر الله اكبر ولا الحمد الله سبحانه وتعالى his name is to be praised الله سبحانه وتعالى his name is to be exalted الله سبحانه وتعالى deserves all of the praise ولا الحمد all praise due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى for blessing us and guiding us to Islam and no one could have guided us لولا ان هدانا الله Nobody, nothing could have guided us if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not choose to guide us to Islam, to Iman, to Tawheed, to the love of the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we bid farewell, as we bid farewell, my dear Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, many Muslims are happy that they don't have to go through this rigorous routine of fasting and running for taraweeh. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. At the same time, multitudes of Muslims are sad and they have mixed emotions that Ramadan is over, Ramadan is finished, the iftars are finished, the coming together and breaking bread is over, 
coming together and praying is finished. But la, it's not finished. We have the daily prayers, which is a time for us to come together as Muslims. There are other events that we should come together. There are halakats. There are collectively gatherings of Muslims. The, the majalas al-dhikr, the sitting down of remembrance of Allah, reading the kutub, reading the books of tafsir and ahadith, and trying to gain a better understanding of these things. Alhamd, as we bid farewell to the blessed month of Ramadan and this auspicious day of Eid, which coincides with Jum'ah, Alhamd, I want to remind us to continuously having the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have that consciousness of Allah in our word and in our deeds. As we emerge out of Ramadan, we should be emerging and removing our old shell and coming out as something new, something refreshed, something revitalized. As we look at the world anew and afresh, we have to look at it as Muslims, as stand up upright Muslims. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He had commanded us in His book, Ya Lidina Aminu. When you have attained the level of faith, have the consciousness of Allah, Allah, that is due for Allah, and we should never ever think of dying except and until we know that we're in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us have taqwa of the people. We are conscious of people of what people will think about us, what people feel about us. Why did he look at us that way? Why did she look at us that way? We have taqwa of the people. Allah Azza wa Jalla reminds us to have taqwa of him, have taqwa that is due for him, not have a fear of people and the opinions of people. Many of us have waswasa, we have whispers, we have thoughts, because we don't focus on Allah. We are thinking about what the people will think about us. We're considering what the people will be considering about us. Back in the day, when we wanted to know about somebody, we would ask their friends. We wouldn't ask that person because everybody can put on a face. Anybody can put on a hat. But we don't know who that person is. So they say, show us your friends and we'll tell you who you are. So we would ask a person about somebody who we don't know. And then they would describe us that this person is an upright individual. This person is a stand-up individual. You don't have to worry about this person. You can trust me that this person, he's a stand-up individual. We need to come out of Ramadan not looking back as, oh, it's a relief. Ramadan is over. Now I can go back into my old ways and habits. La, kella. No. We have to look and emerge that now we're emerging into a bright new day. Inshallah. If we were fasting correctly, if we were fasting correctly, my dear Basalam Iman, if we were fasting with the thought that now we want to purify ourselves, now we want to try and make this a habit of regular prayer, if we were lack before in coming and joining the, the salawat, the khams, joining the regular prayers in Jama'ah, in the masjid, and we know the reward of joining the salat in the masjid, that the Prophet said that the Salat in Jama'ah is more than 25 to 27 times more than the Jama'ah alone, than praying alone. Well, Inshallah, if we were fasting correctly, then this time of year, as we're just emerging, as we're just coming out of Ramadan, is the best time for self-assessment and self-evaluation. بَلْ الْإِنسَانْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرَةٌ وَلَوَقَامْ عَذِيرَةٌ Verily, the human being are the best judge of themselves. Let people say whatever they want to say. But I know myself better than anybody else. We shouldn't be afraid to be a stand-up Muslim in word and deed. That's what Allah is calling us to. All you who believe, Itaqallah, Allah. All you who believe, do we really believe in Allah? Or we only part-time Muslims. When we come to the masjid, we put on our tupi, we put on our jalabiya, we put our miswak in our pocket, and now we're a Muslim. As outward appearance. But inside, we're rotten. 
when we're outside at the workplace, we have nothing to do with Islam. When we're in the mall, we see a Muslim, we hide. We are afraid to say even assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, I mean, there is nothing wrong with having taqwa. Fatizawwadu. Fi nakhir is that a taqwa? Allah says, have this provision. Take this provision. And the best provision to take with us along the way is taqwa. Many of us are afraid to have taqwa. Now that Ramadan is over, or we're in Ramadan, we are afraid to change for the better. We, although the shayateen were locked up, we're afraid to change. We should look back, and now we say, Alhamdulillah, that's the past, and we look forward to a brighter day. We need to understand as believers that in front of us, we should be able to see ourselves as emerging into a new beginning. Since during the month of Ramadan, we were calculating and distributing our zakat. Zakat al-fitr and zakat al-mal and sadaqah. What is the meaning of zakah? What is the meaning of zakah? Zakah literally means something which purifies and grows. When we reflect on what we have given and what we are doing, we should understand that what we have given, what we have been doing, is for us to purify our nafs, purify ourselves. We want to grow. As Allah Azza reminds us and orders us in his book on the tongue of the Rasul Sallallahu Islam to say in Surah Fusilah, Qul, inna ma ana bashuram mithlikum yuha ilayhi, anna ma ilahukum ilahun wahid, fasaqim ilayhi. فَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُ وَوَيْنُ لِلْمُشْرَكِينَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُتُونَ زَكَاةً وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ كَافِرُونَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ عَجْرُ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ الْآيَةِ Allah SWT had ordered his messenger وسلم, to say I am only a human being like you all. We're all human beings. It has been revealed to me that your God is one God. Therefore, take the straight path to him as obediently as you can and seek forgiveness of him. And woe be to those mushrikeen, those who associate partners with Allah, those who do not give in zakah. They do not give in zakah. And they are the disbelievers in the hereafter. Truly those who believe and do righteous good deeds for them will be endless rewards that will never stop if we truly expect goodness in this life and in the next then it must start from within it must be springing from within who are we when we look in the mirror why is it that we cannot focus on our salah? What is distracting us? Why are we so overly concerned about people and what they think of us? Why are we thinking so much about other things? Why are we so concerned about what other people have? As we bid farewell to the blessed month of Ramadan and on this auspicious day of Eid, which has coincided with Yom al -Juma. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our families safe. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our families away, far away from bid'a and shirk and following our vain desires. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us as people of Tawheed and attached to the people of Tawheed. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of us and keep us guided ala sabir ala rashad. And alhamdulillah, mean, we have been standing and praying and begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan, specifically in the last 10 nights, seeking out Laylatul al Khadri, Khair min al Fishah. As we all know, we've been seeking out that because that is better than a thousand months in prayer. Alhamdulillah, mean, 
that we were one of those fortunate ones. Inshallah, we are one of those fortunate ones that were standing and praying on that moment, at that time. But we have to understand, as people of the Sunnah, we understand that everything is not in a straight line. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created everything. And everything is not as it seems to be. We need to strive upon the path of righteousness and piety. We need to overlook those people who might have wronged us or harmed us. We need to overlook the unpleasantries of life and stay focused on our goal. What is our goal? What is the goal of every Muslim? Jannah, Dar al-Abrar. We all want to go to Jannah. We all want to go to paradise. But which one of us is willing and ready to do the work and put in the effort? Alhamdulillah, I mean, Allah Jalla, He reminded us that Ramadan is a time of fasting, of giving, of spending, of ibadah. And we understand that all of those efforts that we do in the blessed month of Ramadan is so as to achieve taqwa. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told us in his book that he had prescribed kutiba alaykum as siyam kama kutiba al-ladhina min qablikum la'alaykum tattaqun al-ayah. We've heard this ayah over and over and over again in the month of Ramadan. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prescribed for us fasting as he has prescribed it for those who came before us so that perhaps we will attain piety. So we understand that this is difficult to wake up, eat a date, drink some water, maybe, maybe not catch the suhoor, and to fast throughout the day, and to pray at night, and to pray throughout the day, and keep on top of our salawat. This is so as to build our taqwa and our iman, that one month period. And Allah understands. This is why this Medicine, this medication is something of bittersweet remedy for us. And this is a type of a fitna. Fasting and praying and standing up is a type of a fitna and purification. And what is fitting? Fitna. It's an examination process. It is how we look at it and deem it as when we see situations or we're involved with individuals. That may rub us the wrong way. How do we view that situation? We have to understand that fitna, tests, they come in various types and shapes and sizes. So we have to understand that Allah says in his book, in Surah Ankabut, Surah called the spider, Alif Lamim, حسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا أمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had stated, Alif Lamin. Do people believe that they will just be left to say that they are believers and they will not be tested? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested those who came before us. So then we will know who is the truthful person. And then we will know who is the liar. So Allah will give us a test of our friends, our family, our wealth, that which we have and that which we have not. Allah gives us all types of tests. So Allah will know and the people will know, is this person a real believer? Is he a real Muslim? Or is he just faking it? You know when he puts on his kufi and his thobe when he comes to the masjid to show la. Are we real? Allah just says he will test us as he tests those who came before us so that Allah will know. So that Allah will know because we can easily fool the people. People are good actors and actresses so that Allah will know. Who, why are we trying to fool the people? Because we're afraid of the people. Because we're afraid to be our true, authentic selves. This is the meaning of taqwa. That we have taqwa of Allah. Allah says, Ya iladina aminu, ittaqullah, haqtu qatihi, wala tumutunna 
illu antu muslimun. Why are we afraid to be our true authentic selves? Because we're afraid of the people. Why do we have to put on a sham piety? Because we're afraid of the people. We need to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we're really sincere and we're really grateful that we have been guided to Islam and Iman and Tawheed and understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his uluhiyya, his rububiyya and his asma wa sifat and his names, attributes and his oneness. We've been blessed. So why do we have to put on a sham piety? As people of Tawheed, we need to be prepared to struggle upon this path. We need not to be afraid of Lomatalayim, of those who criticize us. We are not afraid of those who want to point finger and make a jest and laugh. We are happy. We are happy because we know whatever we're doing, we're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are people who like to struggle on the path of Allah, on the path of piety. We are not here to try and show a sham piety. La. We want to struggle on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to understand that Ramadan was a period of struggle. Ramadan was a period of self-actualization. Now that we are emerging from Ramadan, now are we going to just continue to look for handouts? Or are we going to try to be a sincerely practicing Muslim in word and deed? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq and give us the strength and give us a keen insight to be appreciative of being guided to Islam and Iman. Amen. Bismillah, salatu wassalam, ala rasulullah, wa ala alihi wa sallam, wa sallam, wa sallam, As I mentioned, that zakah, the meaning of zakah, literally means a purification. We give out zakat al-fitr, we give zakat al-mal, we share of what we have, of our wealth, of our food stuff, of our grain. We share and we make an effort to look for the people who will distribute these things as an expression of our piety. Alhamdulillah, what I mean. Just like a plant. Anyone who understands anything about agriculture, we have to prepare the earth. We have to prepare the ground before we plant the seed. And as the seed grows, we have to prune it. We have to take care of it. We can't give it too much water. But it needs some water to grow. At the same time, I want us to understand that as we emerge from Ramadan, we need to look at ourselves and understand, have we truly answered the call to taqwa, to iman? At the same time, I want us to understand that if we are one of those fortunate ones to have been standing up on that night, of decrees, asking and begging of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to understand that everything is not going to be in a straight line. There will be ups and downs. There will be bumpy roads. There will be thorns on the road. But we need to collect our garment and know that the garment of taqwa, dharika khair, libas of taqwa, dharika khair, the rain, the garment of piety, and taqwa, and being conscious of Allah in all of our dealings, knowing that life is all about examinations and tests, and that these are just necessary aspects of life, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put us through these examinations to see what's the quality of this Muslim. What is the quality? We do not know the quality of an individual until we have been with that person. Or in Khattab, he said to one man, he said, that person is a pious man. Or in Khattab, he said, maybe you just see him bending and bowing in the masjid. You just see him at the mosque praying and standing. But you don't know him. You do not know that person until he do three things. He said, what is that? Ya Amir Mu'minin. That you spend time, you slept with him. At his place, you travel with that person and you've eaten that person. And the Salaf, they will remind us 
that you know a lot about a person's taqwa by way of their eating habits. Are they gluttonous? Do they like to share? Do they think of others over themselves? Observe the person's eating habits. Not that we're spying on the person. But we understand the qadha wa qadha. The destiny of Allah. The pre-decree of Allah. The good and that of it which we dislike. It's all a part of Allah's plan in building our iman. In our taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pre-decreed things. And everything is not as it seems. I've said this before. That not everything that glitters is gold. And we have no right to be judgmental. And we have no right to spy and look and check. La. Move and live in this life with a good, clean heart. We understand that there will be ups and downs in life. We pray and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He given us all of the good that we have asked Him for during the night of the cruise. But we have to understand. And I want us to understand this fully. And I want this to be left in your minds. That although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us those things that we have asked for, they can be in one of three instances that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give us what we ask for straight away. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can avert some harm that was intended for us, that was coming our way. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can keep that dua stored for us in Jannah, in, the term, in, in terms of accumulated wealth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in either way, make it good for us. And Allah will subhanahu wa ta'ala have made it good for us. Whatever we have been begging and pleading Allah for, it is the best thing. We may not realize it. We may be asking Allah for something so much and we don't see it. It's as if we don't see anything of it. Anything of it whatsoever. But Allah has something better for us in store. We don't understand that. This is Allah's hikmah. Hikmah al-baligha. This is Allah's unseen hikmah. We want something so bad, but it's not good for us. It's not good for us. Sometimes we hate and we dislike a thing so much, but that thing is better for us. Allah knows and we do not know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our families, our wives, our husbands, our children, our spouses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Have mercy on our families. Have mercy on our children. Have mercy on our, our, our parents. Those who are sick. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, give the shifa for those Muslims who are sick and they're suffering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy and help our brothers who are fighting and struggling in Sudan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters who are struggling in Somal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters who are struggling and they're starving in Pakistan, in the Hind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the brothers who have been struggling in the Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us on this blessed, auspicious day of Eid, which coincides with Juma. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all of us and keep us guided ala sabil ala shad. In Allah malaikum saloon ala nabid. Ya ladin amnu.